uh, the for every stimuli our body actually responds well but uh, what happens is we are only not aware of it and we are not actually uh, looking into those uh, very very simple and subtle material that our body responds to us and uh, what happens is when you uh, have a vomiting most of them do not take medicines they think okay it's just one once or twice it's okay but what happens is most uh, that uh, 50% of people who are not uh, reluctant to taking medicines will actually lead a better life but 50% of people will actually take some medicines like uh, domstal or something like that emi said stop it once you stop it it becomes a disease but if you do not stop it it is actually helping you to lead to a next level the thing is that the body itself tries to push whatever is not required by the body in an easy manner generally when you are trying to vomit and all you have to literally strain put your hand or uh, tickle your uh, epiglottis and all that but uh, once your body is not feeling that food is not food fine for you it literally comes out that so means that your body is not even trying to absorb it or kind of try to digest it itself so it will be gone completely uh, i would advise that if you have this vomiting or diarrhea just once or twice it is completely fine beyond that only you have to actually take medication or even uh, for one day you can actually wait because that one day will actually give your body itself some time to adjust because there are some measures like deepana pachana we call deepana and pachana is like you are trying to, to help the body to absorb the material by helping it to digest it and creating an appetizing feel now deepana is like you are fully digesting it and trying to help in absorption so these are two measures uh these can be easily made by using the ginger or uh, tea uh, just uh, using ardrak chai or by uh, using a little bit of uh, lemon with honey because all these are satiators and try to help in uh, digestion uh, the dry the raw dry ginger i said that all can be actually helpful so these are some measures which has to be done but what happens even when you do this dinasharya and then your body actually accumulates uh, material so there will be some symptoms that the body shows up now i'll show you a slide you put uh, you can actually ping how many of you have either one of these how many you have you can actually put in the chat box let me see just want to see the chat box numbers are not coming up <laughs> no one wants to put the numbers <laughs> i am putting up i am i'm going to write you okay Good. i have three of them out of four okay you, you just have to mention to one or two or three okay fine okay now let me ask you in out of these symptoms how many of these are regular regular means at least 3 times a week 3 to 4 times a week 3 to 4 times a week okay okay one i think is bloating uh aparna ji which one uh bloating is i think uh, related to me which is quite often uh, because i tend to travel a lot and i tend to eat outside i have no choice left so whenever i eat out there is a bloating for sure eat, despite having very very little food uh, <laughs> but uh, you know immediately i yes. think you understood also when you take little food also there can be bloating it's just like yes, how you yes. how you put material into a balloon yeah <laughs> if you put very little also it's going to be a problem common. yeah most common i guess you know bloating with all of us because yes, we tend to eat almost all have said bloating that is what i saw actually speaking yeah. bloating 
uh, you can understand it with the help of a balloon. When you, uh, as per Ayurveda, how we have to fill in the stomach is like one fourth of it should be one third of it actually should be the solid material, one third should be water, and one third should be empty air. So you can actually try fitting in how you're taking your diet. If you take more of diet, what happens is the balloon is congested. So it will not be bloating, but actually that fullness, it will end up in actually indigestion like condition. If you take more water, what happens? It will be like you are uh, feeling full, but at the same time, you don't have the material to be digested. And if you are actually taking less diet, there comes bloating or irregular diet. When you actually have to put in your food, you are not putting your food. So what happens is there is an accumulation, a kind of oxidation process. So <clears throat> this oxidation can be cut off only when you put that material or you have to add in some fuel. Just by that itself, it will be completely ready. And all of you can actually use this ghee little, bit, little by little so that it actually helps you in your bloating condition. Now coming back, need for the cleansing of the body is that these are the symptoms which we generally have in our body at least weekly once or twice at least and these are symptoms which show that your body actually needs a cleaning and uh, constipation you can actually uh, have it as you age by also but that doesn't mean that everyone should have constipation loss of appetite i hope you understand the loss of appetite means you don't want to eat anything uh, there is a psychological condition also wherein you feel hungry, but you cannot eat. It's actually called anorexia nervosa. But uh, that is actually the uh, high-end version of loss of appetite. But loss of appetite itself means that you feel a little hungry, but you don't want to eat. And uh, you might have some vomiting sensation when you want to eat. Flatulence. Flatulence is gas through the downward passage. And then bloating of stomach is a feeling. You feel a kind of distended stomach and headaches. Headaches are a very common thing when you have, you, you can see that all of these are related to the digestive pattern. And uh, headaches are very common also when you have irregular diet. Nausea, nausea is also again, you have either indigestion or you have more of pitta condition. That is, you are not taking food in your right intervals your acid level increases wherein it can create this nausea. Frequent yawning. Frequent yawning comes only because your sleep pattern is not enough or adequate and uh, <clears throat> you might be kind of uh, overdoing your work. So in such condition, you will, uh, you will be uh, deprived of the oxygen you require and so you will feel that frequent yawning. Drowsiness is actually related to your sleep and your body. If you have a kind of uh, uh, heaviness in your body, you feel, then you feel the drowsiness showing up. Even in case of constipation also, people can have this drowsiness. Inadequate sleep is all because of your uh, in, improper planning of the day. And so try to plan out that you get enough quantity of sleep. <clears throat> Lassitude, again, when the body starts feeling that heaviness, we feel that lassitude. Loss of concentration, obviously, when you have some turbidity, you feel that some clog clogging is there in your uh, mind and body, you want to have, you, you will actually feel that loss of concentration. So that has to be clean. Excessive salivation. Excessive salivation is that you feel it because you are having some kind of uh, material in your body that is not completely digested, especially. You will feel it when you have the nausea, indigestion and such conditions. So these are some of the symptoms which show that at least once in three months, you have to undergo just a, a clean, uh, uh, as per uh, the traditional way, all of us used to have a kind of uh, purgation at least. The uh, commonest material that was used was castor oil. Uh, the people were just in, uh, allowed to intake this castor oil, some 15 to 20 ml in the morning. And then it was like you have to uh, continuously pass bubbles. But uh, there was not a regulation as such. But uh, I should say most of the people who are here would have experienced that. And uh, most of the diseases were also eradicated just because of that. Uh, these kind of... Uh, 
uh, emptying of the bowel, it is not only emptying because this castor oil actually has the capability of creating the digestive part. So whatever is uh, remaining or st becoming stagnant as uh, indigested material, that will also get removed. So it's like it will get digested and then get removed. So it is uh, nothing is going to remain as such. There are many other materials also. Like for example, uh, you would have seen the kanikonna. We call it in uh, uh, Malayalam konna. Uh, in case of uh, Vishu, there is actually a, a festival called Vishu uh, in Kerala. It comes in the April month. You have uh, this yellow colored beautiful flowers. It is uh, Cassia fistula. It is called, uh, it is actually one of the best medicine which will help remove whatever material is stagnant in the body and it helps in a clean way that uh, nothing will remain there and it is also effective in cases of uh, skin problems and uh, very deep, uh, deep non-healing ulcer type of conditions, uh, diabetes condition, all that condition is very effective. And then comes, uh, there is called a Trivrut. Trivrut is actually one of the other materials which is actually called a Sukhavireshana. Sukhavireshana means you are going to have a purgation but in an easier manner. You are not getting tired out of it. So that is actually Sukhavireshana and it can be taken every three months. So these are some of the materials. I just wanted to introduce that. So first we'll begin with Snehapana. Uh, you remember the other day I was telling you 300 ml of uh, ghee will be given. This is the manner it will be given. It will be uh, almost uh, uh, first first day we do is 50 ml we give. Analyze the amount of time it takes to digest by the person and then calculate the maximum quantity of the ghee that can be digested by the body in a single day. That is actually in the multiplied into 7 so that we give them the maximum dosage of ghee. So what happens is it goes to each cell. After that, we have a process of uh, giving steaming. After the seventh day, we give a steaming. So what happens is it opens up and then whatever is not necessary by the body is all completely removed. And this is a process because the ghee only has the medium to trespass all these uh, cell barriers. And so it goes to each cell and cleanses it. And uh, generally what I do is uh, as an OP treatment and all, I advise the patients to undergo three days of this ghee uh, intake and then undergo a proper uh, purgation at home. So ghee intake and when I'm not seeing the patient, I'm not able to take uh, 300 ml and all. So what we do is very little amount of ghee will be given and that quantity of ghee will be asked to uh, intake daily in the morning make sure that it is completely digested, taking very light food. During this period of time, we give them only kanji. We give them only kanji, nothing else. So all these seven days, it's almost like a fasting also. Only, but, but with the best uh, ghee. And uh, this ghee actually, um, after the snehapan of seven days, the body gets in a prepared in a way that it is internally and externally. After you intake the ghee, on the seventh day, you can feel the glistening surface on the, of the uh, ghee on the skin. And when you damp a paper, you can actually feel the ghee sticking on it. So that is how the ghee has been evolved into our body. And uh, after that is actually because the body has to be prepared. Uh, any of these panchakarmas are very drastic in nature. It actually eliminates all the body elements which are not necessary. So you cannot actually try... Uh, you use a knife to scrape it out. So you are actually do what you are doing is you are taking that stick. You can understand it as a stick or the body. The body is actually put it in the oil and then it is giving so given some warming up. So what happens is it is made flexible. And this nehapana is one such measure. These are some of the external treatment modalities, which is generally done also. So as to prepare the body, the, it is called Snehana and Svedana. Snehana, it can be internally or externally. The, uh, the previous picture you saw is actually internal intake. And external can be like you are applying uh, oil, you are pouring oil. You can have this oil over the head. It's called Shirodhara. And uh, dry powder massage, it varies based on the condition of the patient. Okay. 
So these are the panchakarmas. We'll go on to the panchakarma. The first one is actually vamana. You can see the procedure of removing the doshas from the upper respiratory upper tract by the usage of medicines that are predominant in vayu and akasha. Uh, it is like uh, the we understand the kapha dosha to remain until the chest region. So we understand that any of the pitta and uh, pitta is it's in a position where it is from the chest above the nabi. That is the position for pitta and below the nabi is vata. So any material that is stagnant between pitta and kapha region. So we, above the nabi, whatever problems you have, for all of these, we use this vamana procedure. Uh, the vamana procedure will actually bring out whatever is not digested. It, uh, there is not a necessary that the material gets digested because once the material gets digested, it goes to the intestine. So here what we are doing is we are not even giving some time to get it digested. We are just completely trying to bring it out. In this procedure, we fill the person's uh, brim of the neck until that we give them this uh, milk, uh, milk, otherwise some decoction or even sugarcane juice based on the condition of the patient or the constitution of the patient and the disease, whichever is very much suitable to him. And then we give a material which helps in uh, vomiting out and immediately it will be, uh, it will just come out like uh, uh, you have a full free force. And that is actually, you can see the procedure here. I, I didn't want to explain much because it's more technical. I just wanted to put so that you can uh, also understand what is happening. It, it actually affects the labyrinth center. The hypothalamus, all that vomiting center is being activated. That is how it, uh, it is actually, the process is triggered. And uh, this helps in many of the skin problems mainly. And then in uh, maximum problems of uh, gastritis, GERD, everything can be cured with this problem. Even for thyroid problems also, we use this disease. So we use this treatment. The purgation of the self is a gateway to purity. Because uh, purification is a very simple procedure compared to all other panchakarmas. And so that is why the purgation of the self is very important. So this is, you are expelling the doshas by intaking a medicine and uh, helping it to digest. And then whatever material is uh, uh, to be expelled from the body, it has been removed through the anal route. So this is the procedure. There are so much of reflexes happening. And uh, whatever you are intaking, it is completely getting uh, uh, related to the local defecation spread reflexes and it is eliminated out. So coming back here, what we do is uh, we have so much of materials that are very much uh, predominant in Prithvi and Jala Mahabodha because that has got the heaviness. It actually helps in eliminating through the anal road. And uh, those are the materials only I said, like uh, Thrugrit, Aragvada, uh, and a common thing is castor oil. Very common one is castor oil. This is a procedure called Vasti. Um, this is, uh, you would be very commonly aware of the enema procedure. Enema procedure in uh, allopath hospital and all, they do it with soap water. In naturopathy hospital, if you go, you have a big can and you have water filled in it and that will be put into the anal region. But here you can see it is red in color. What is happening is there is a decoction or it can be oil and you have a nozzle. You see the nozzle? It is actually made of copper. That is the best. And uh, nowadays, uh, since people are very much uh, offended using uh, the same thing, so people try to use uh, plastic material, which is actually disposable. And uh, the material will be in prepared in a way that it is uh, uh, the micronutrients, you know, like you have this nano material oh, wow. preparation. All these uh, medicines have that nano absorption quality that we use in it. <laughs> Some disturbance. Can I continue? Okay. So uh, the, the, there are actually in this uh, decoction enema, there are uh, kashayams, decoctions are there, there is uh, addition of ghee, there is addition of honey, there is addition of dill seed, there is addition of some salts, 
you know actually the combination is that it is made in a specific rotatory movement so that there is a kind of uh, an, in the, uh, making it into a nano material uh, and uh, this is being given to the place wherein we have the best absorption you know for children and all when you have this uh, temperature going very high uh, the best measure that to reduce it is applying the paracetamol uh, suppository we say that will be applied at the anal region and immediately the temperature will come down it will be even go to a febrile condition also and the same same process we are doing here because at the um, you know we have the transverse and then the ascending colon the material that we uh, we send is actually uh, i can show you from the rectum from the rectum until the you can see the number 422 until that only it will go so what happens is these are areas wherein beautiful absorption takes place in our body generally after uh, uh, all this digestion and all the solid material will be quickly absorbed and the later part only in the later part of the uh, descending colon only you have the liquid being absorbed that is why the same pattern is being used or the same mechanism is being adapted for using this vasti treatment this is mainly advised in case of the sacral nerve problems sacral nerve like you can uh, get affected by this low back ache uh, in case of ibdp conditions fractures and uh, in case of any hip problems knee problems leg problems and all you will get wonderful results and for paralysis condition all these it is mainly useful for neurologic conditions and uh, this is the uh, how it acts actually see you can see the action of vasti on the nerve as i told you it is going to uh, going into the micturition and uh, defecation control by the nerve pathways and it has a pathway to reach up to the centers in the brain and that is why it acts and the material are completely absorbed in this area itself in the uh, lower part of the sacral area itself and so what happens is the material will e uh, very easily be absorbed by the body and it will be trespassed to the part where it is required next comes nasya nasya we already discussed as dinacharya but here actually as i said so it is not two drops that will be mentioned it will be starting from 3 until 30 drops we use in one nostril that means like it was almost like uh, uh, in ml count we can say that we are using it for the patient but uh, the benefit is that anything that has to be cleared from all these upper nostril area uh, your uh, upper respiratory tract even then it acts it helps for your cervical problem cervical spondylosis uh, spondylitis and then uh, ap Uh, you have the some um, frozen shoulder problems in such conditions also it is very effective so any disease above the clavicle it is a wonderful medicine and uh, it is most used in actually cases of uh, eyes in cases of uh, ears and then about the demyelinating conditions and all we have special medicines that can be absorbed and uh, actually speaking even people who are in uh, coma Uh, the there are some medicines which can help them alert up you would have uh, seen this grandfathers and all using the snuff powder just like that there are med medicines are made into powders and that is used in case of people who are coma so that they can be awakened <clears throat> this is the actual mechanism of the nasya because it has been applied to an area which is highly vascular in nature and from there that vascularity will also improve the all factory nerves to be activated so automatically the disease is being cut off so the benefits of uh, panchakarma is that it helps restore the metabolic fire it eliminates the toxins it actually the first thing is to eliminate the toxins and second we do not want to create any disturbance to the agni so making sure that agni is in balance and helps to create a balance in our uh, all the trudoshas there is no increase of vada pitta and kapha because all of the people do not undergo this panchakarma and it is only one or two treatments that will be done to a patient and helps implement a healthy diet and lifestyle it is up to the patient to undergo and uh, uh, continue with it it helps reduce the stress improves the relaxation and tolerance because 
any of these uh, pa panchakarmas if you undergo i can assure you that you will see the clarity of your sense organs your body lightness any of these you will experience so that itself will help remove whatever it is it's like stress or intolerance and all that will be removed it slows down the aging process as i told you it's just like you're rubbing each cell of your body so obviously that aging process will be will be actually extended and boost the body's immunity levels it improves the strength endurance and vitality now vitality here it means the ages so just like uh, when you are having any material that is uh, stagnant in your room and all you try to clean it out this is also a process in which you are trying to completely remove it and what happens is you have a nice clean body so obviously whatever dhatus which are getting formed is also very 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 strong and at the same time the endurance level or the tolerance level of your body to any diseases improved and the vitality or the ages will also be improved now when you have a person with very good ages that itself means that they will be able to tolerate any situation physically and mentally that is a very very important thing of ages so think positively exercise daily exercise daily is very important eat healthy work hard stay strong worry less dance more love often and be happy so i end here hello ma'am yeah coming uh, back yeah yeah yes ma'am now you can show your questions yeah ma'am uh, i have two babies they are yeah. uh, seven years old and younger one is uh, three years old okay uh, so how often it should be like deworm their body usually they uh, do deworm this is well, it what is the age you said what is the age you said my elder son is seven years and my younger okay. baby is three years three plus three plus okay. and seven plus it is fine if you can do it every three months every three months like how yeah. how it should we, be taken uh, actually there are uh, medicines in ayurveda which you can use it just for three days that itself will help uh, you you have to use like tablets are there and otherwise you can use this uh, arishtas like muska arishta some arishtas are there which actually help in uh, removing the worm it's like deworming and at the same time it helps in improving the digestion also So you can like, use that also. Mustarista is one. No, how to do or, or say? Is it required or to give them? Is it necessary to give or like if they feel? Dull? Actually, uh, children, what happens is they use more of the sweet material, no? So that is why it is better that you have this deworming every three months. And when it becomes a habit, let me tell you, they will be safe from many diseases. So it's good that you do. Okay. Okay. okay and uh, you can actually after a pay, like um, about the age of 5 years itself you can uh, make sure that they do this biration or kind of uh, purgation which can you which you can do it at home at itself like all other panchakarma you need to actually come to a clinic or a hospital but uh, the biration is like traditionally it was part so of you can also itself. just advocate that like what like home remedy uh, remedies how to do what to do to the babies just castor oil with a little bit of milk that itself can be effective so, for 5 years not yeah. your smaller one uh, for the bigger one you can do like you can give 1 to 2 teaspoon okay uh, same equal level uh, half oil half milk yeah you just take half glass of milk and then add a uh, a little bit of like 1 to 2 teaspoon of oil and then give and it should be light lukewarm when you are giving it the uh, oil should be lukewarm so it's better to warm the milk and then give like that okay. ma'am it should be uh, before sleeping yeah aranya we have to no, know it should be uh, early morning that you have to give okay okay ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am yeah yes hello thank you aramya we have a question from anchal sharma please go ahead yeah ma'am i am uh, cancer patient uh, uh, mujhe okay thyroid lymphoma tha to abhi meri chemo aur uh, uh, wo khatam ho gayi hai radio doctor bol rahe hain ki 
ओके इट इज फ्री बट मैं ये जानना चाहती हूँ कि ये दोबारा से इसका रेफरेंस ना हो देन व्हाट व्हाट शुड आई डू फॉर दिस actually as i said no this uh, sneha pana is a very important treatment for you and post that you can uh, undergo uh, purgation or uh, or whatever because uh, based on your condition I, i should actually get more details from you then only i'll be able to analyze which panchakarma is suitable after doing that you have to undergo rasayana therapy rasayana is like tomorrow we'll discuss uh, you will be able to understand better why it is important this rasayana therapy is one that is required in your case okay okay ma'am meri jodi first stage pe ye diagnose ho gaya tha aur abhi main mujhe matlab disease free bola hai doctor ne matlab main theek hu mere thyroid se thyroid mein swelling thi to wahan se usko diagnose kiya tha to ye april mein diagnose march mein diagnose hua tha april se mera treatment shuru hua tha aur mujhe jo b cell नॉन हॉपकिंस लिम्फोमा था ओके 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 मैम डाइट वाइज मैं किस तरह डाइट किस तरह की रखू और क्या मुझे mm-hmm. करना चाहिए मुझे बस अब इसका ये लग रहा है कि ये दोबारा से ना आए ओके आई अंडरस्टैंड योर योर आई एम लिटरली एंशियस अबाउट दिस थिंग इट इज बेटर एक्चुअली वी हैव अ पर्सनल चैट ओके मैम ओके थैंक यू ओके थैंक यू आंचल आई एम गोइंग share uh, dr arunya's number in the chat box and okay. you can directly connect with her on top okay ma'am okay that will be better okay okay ma'am hey, i have a question okay arunya uh, i don't know if there is yes. any questions more but you things yeah uh, someone said uh, i want to ask you um, so yeah, the oil yeah. that you put it on a vasti or in a in a you know anywhere uh what what temperature oil should be and what kind of oil should be actually um, as i told you this is more a uh, treatment that we advise as per uh, in hospital it is not that a home remedy that we advise but in case of uh, if you have problems like uh, uh, in inter- in what like ibdp no we call this uh, a disc problem or any kind of uh, spondylitis or spondylosis and all that in such conditions and all you will have pain uh, which is uh, radiating to the leg in that conditions and all you can use this oil called sahajradi tailam or danvantram tailam in a very small tube you know like you have um, a, a 10 ml 20 ml syringe which is actually fitted to a catheter you can use it like that i generally advise that uh, with a little bit of uh, salt you know the oil has to be warmed with a little bit of salt just to 1 to 2 grams of salt and then once it is uh, properly dissolved that can be used which is actually a type of uh, anuvasana vasti we call the vasti in which we use oil but it is a very very mild form which is uh, otherwise called as matra vasti matra vasti is like you are using only very little quantity of oil oil or any medication as vasti and that can be done uh, to people who are having these problems uh, yeah, what what is what is your opinion about coffee enema coffee enema i would say like it is weird <laughs> because i am not sure of its quality uh, because uh, i have only taken it as a intake and one like uh, i know it's a taste i know it's how it acts on based on its taste but i don't know how it acts when it is used as an enema i understand there are so many materials that we use as enema but uh, not coffee as as, as per ayurveda and what can be done to increase your uh, vagus nerve function um uh, actually speaking our vagus nerve is really affected when you have problems of this constipation or uh, uh looking back to your problems like um uh keeping control of your vagus itself will create your uh active you know it will harm your vagus nerve so it is best actually to keep your uh, uh don't do not take control of your normal voluntary actions right in voluntary action it is better to uh, activate it like if you feel like uh, sneezing just go ahead if you feel like passing bowels you have to immediately do that because 
these are things which will actually act neurologically so this vagus nerve and all will get affected especially in such conditions sneezing is one thing which will affect the vagus nerve hello ma'am if nobody has questions <laughs> then i'll ask question so i'll okay. wait for the other person to ask question hello hello yeah. Ma'am, you are able to yeah, hear me. Yeah, I can me? hear you, Sapna. Yeah, yeah, I can hear yes. you, Sapna. Ma'am, I want to know two things. First is how to make yeah. the body alkaline, and second is mm. how to remove severe constipation. Yeah, actually speaking, you as you said, uh, when you are not having this uh, regular bowel habit itself, it will affect your agni, and obviously, it will create problems of acidity. As I, I understand your problem. uh the first thing is that regulate your diet regulate your diet in a way that you are giving some time to digest the material take material which are equally fibrous that means that you have to take large quantities of vegetables fruits because these will actually help in, in creating that uh, saltification of material you know like uh, green gram is one material which will help form your stool so that is also one material that you can take so forming of stools is also very important because once you are taking very liquid diet itself that also will not help and enough quantity of water by the body the demand of the body is to be taken care and at the same time whenever you taking food also try to include a little bit of water and uh, add enough digestives in the body uh, in your food like uh, adding a little bit of garlic uh ginger pepper the uh, uh turmeric all these are actually uh, digestives which we can use in our body in a day to day life itself but in a very very small way you are not to use uh, the dosage in too much quantity but very little uh, that will actually add to the flavor and also at the same time act in a way that it helps in digestion so these are to be done and uh a little bit of ghee regularly all of these will help eliminate whatever is not necessary by the body as i told you previous night when you are going to bed you are actually not to be taking your stomach full make sure you are taking at least 3 hours before your bedtime so that all of these will get completely digested and morning when you wake up fresh you will have a normal natural call that call has to be attended if it is not attended you will lose that call and once you lose that call the condition of constipation sets in okay so it is like you have to make sure that you have a connect with the physical body and that will the body itself will demand whatever is necessary for the body and uh, just give the material as such and that will take care okay and then how to make the body alkaline if you have a acidic body uh, actually when you say acidic you mean that you have an increase in pitta ghee is one yes. material which is very good milk you can use regularly and then a little bit of honey that is actually very good as an alkaline but uh, do not take it at night you have to take it in the day time like just 1 teaspoon honey as it is oh yeah as it is or with water normal water it is very good okay ma'am people who have kapha problem for them mm. how do we take honey like it's mixed in normal water or little normal water, water. it is it is actually normal. best to have it with boiled and cold water boiled it should okay. be completely cooled and then in that water you can add and for them you can add a little bit of pepper also with uh, that honey uh, thing no it is very good okay 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 a pinch of pepper would be very effective Okay thank you ma'am uh, actually when i wanted to explain I... on this panchakarma i wanted to make sure because uh, wherever you go to an ayurvedic center people take you to a massage and then say it is a panchakarma make sure that it is not panchakarma i just wanted to make sure that you understand what is panchakarma and what is a massage that is the only difference you have to make out yeah, right. because panchakarma is you right. cannot do in a single day you literally have to wait for the day and uh, i
yes i also wanted to very clearly and that what ayurveda from kerala is very different from the ayurveda practice in rest of india uh it is also a major difference that plays a role uh adanya as a commoner i have to question to ask you yeah yeah please um i really hope my questions would help you to understand Uh, we talked about castor oil, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, to as a purgation, you can take you know, milk or you know, you can as it is apply something. Is there any alternative to the castor oil? How do we know which castor oil? Because I have come across castor oil, you know, the various uh, forms of castor oil. The some say this is not a consumable one. So how do you put that one? And the second is what is the quantity that one can take? generally a medicated castor oil that we get in a medical store is fine because uh, i understand as aparna ji says there are so much of oils that are coming up right now so it is very difficult yes. it's best to go for medicated castor oil which you get in small bottles not much of quantity you get also and 1 uh, teaspoon to 2 teaspoon is an adult dose and uh, you can above the age of 10 itself you can give 1 to 2 teaspoon and for elderly like uh, uh, an age group of 30 to 40 and all you can use for up to 3 teaspoons and then again reduce it to like after the age of 50 it is better to use 1 to 2 2 teaspoon so this is very easy to you know to cleanse your body since and yeah. uh, how yeah, often you can actually do that uh, most people uh, you can have you, this kind of with the addition system yeah please it is better that you have just 1 to 2 teaspoons of ghee for 3 days the previous uh, like uh, if you're planning on a sunday for uh, wednesday thursday oh sorry thursday friday and saturday you can have at least in your dinner time you can have a little bit of kanji which is a little bit of ghee in it so what happens is your body will actually get flexed up and be prepared for getting that elimination treatment and uh, the best part is that when you use the ghee along with the kanji and then you, when you undergo the uh, purgation therapy you will not have any stomach pain otherwise there will be kind of catchy pain okay. you know you you will have that is actually a practical okay. thing i'm telling you when you are uh, doing just the castor oil okay. you might experience all these but at the same time if you are preparing the body just 1 to 2 teaspoon of ghee itself will do wonders but it has to be done in a proper way arvi i have one thing yeah it is known widely known in south of india and uh, especially in kerala but what if you can just give an alternative for kanji kanji is a porridge you can say yeah, in just uh, rice porridge you know, uh, just porridge, porridge yeah. that you can porridge. use yeah, yeah. you can you can even use uh, oats or something like that some porridge you can use it with wheat it is not necessary that you use rice itself you can use wheat you can use barley anything but it has to be in a liquid state it should not be uh, like a very uh, solid state it should be in a semi solid that's the best and then you add a little bit of ghee you have to take it warm that is one thing that's very important yes so is there any other alternative also in case of because we have people from all over the world here so you know is there any other uh, you know form that instead of kanji if not you know ki uh, um, rice or you will, any you will other have some kind of porridge right you have a some solid kind of uh, semi solid material you will have prepared not a vegetable solid not it can be even uh, it is better the uh, carbohydrate content it is better with carbohydrate content because you need the body also to get that strength that is why the carbohydrate content itself is a best option and uh, you so don't so have to when when i mean kanji it is like when you take one bowl of uh, kanji also you're going to use only very little rice so you can calculate the quantity of carbohydrate that actually goes into it it's only very little but it will be simple and it will be uh properly digested also when you have you when you are mixing it with rice pulses and all that there will be a difference of uh, digestion and i don't want that to happen because the digestion should be pakka it should be clear and it should be crystal clear that the material that goes into our body will be completely digested without any disturbance 
So, kanji mix All with right. the castor oil, right? Is that what he said? No, kanji mixed with no, no, no. That is actually to be intaken two days before you do, three days before you do the purgation. And then, okay, thank you. castor oil is to be used on the same day with a little bit of milk. And that is to be taken early morning by almost like uh, 7 o'clock would be apt for Indian time. Uh, generally, when we say after your sunrises in uh, in your uh, in, if you, if you, people are from foreign countries are there, I would advise like approximately seven o'clock would be an apt apt time based on your condition, your place also, and it has to be little warm enough. That is why uh, it is advised to be taken during that period so that it initiates a proper digestion. Now, when you're undergoing purgation, the material has to be properly digested. So don't expect that once you take itself, you'll have to rush to the toilet. No, you will have to wait. Sometimes for people, it will start, your bowel habit will start only by 9 o'clock. So until then, what you're doing is sip in half glass of warm water on and off. It will be just like uh, you, it should be warm water, warm enough, uh, almost like tea, equal to the uh, warmth you are using for tea and all. You have to sip it down. Do not gulp it off. Okay. You will warm it up. I have, uh, I have a more, uh, uh, you know, important thing to also to discuss. So okay. we were talking about, uh, you know, this session was a little deeper. Like, you know, going through those, uh, those specifications, you know, I think these are all done under some guidance and, yes. you know, uh, through all of these. And also things. you mentioned. That is why I frequently mentioned it is done under hospital care because yes. only the purgation so is done at home. Yes, so I also believe that, you know, these are only meant for uh, some, uh, you know, patients or you recommend such, uh, you know, kind of uh, routine for a healthy person once in a while. Yes. Yes. I mean, for all of us to understand, for example, even I have, for example, let's say a bloating, uh, not a patient, but yes, if you, if I am just, you know, going through quite often, uh, as a, you know, as a person, as a person of middle age, you know, can I just, uh, you know, go for all these entire, uh, you know, the sequence of treatments and get back to my life, you know, healthily and happily? As I told you, all these panchakarmas have been denoted for some specific doshas. So I told you vata and pitta mm -hmm. has been connected with the vasti and then uh, pitta and kapha is connected with the vamana. So, uh, you know, as a normal healthy person also, you will have some problem, like some weakness over our mm -hmm. part or something that we actually note up. So uh, as a regular right. routine, it has been specified that you do undergo any of these purification therapies in some seasons. Like for example, this vasti is one of the best to be done during the period of the rains. When the rains start, you will have problems of vata and uh, vasti is the best treatment to target it. And uh, in case of this cold season, that time you are advised to undergo this vamana, the vomiting therapy. That's all advice actually for healthy people rather than treating the disease. But as a healthy person, I would advise once in a year or at least once in two years, if you can meet a person, do it for nearly 10 days. If you can sit for 10 days, any of these panchakarma therapies, if you do itself, will treat most of your diseases. You, you will not have to get worried about getting affected by very serious problems. So it, to keep yourself healthy, you can actually try to have some days for yourself. And that will really do wonders. Okay. That's, I have, a question. I, uh, have another thing. Yeah, come on here with the question. Please go again, sir. Um, how do you increase the stomach acid? Stomach acid? Yeah. If you do fasting itself, you will know how it, it is increasing. Oh, so the fasting will increase automatically? Stomach yes, acid. of course. Actually, the thing is that we are not doing the fasting in a proper way. You should be actually having a little bit of, uh, you know, give some time to the body to digest. And then when you're, uh, you're trying to actually take food, you have to take it in very little quantity. So that will slowly improve your digestive pattern. 
what happens is after, immediately after fasting you are taking very heavy diet that is not the matter you know uh, you would have seen people um, the muslims no they undergo the fasting and immediately after fasting there is a bowl of uh, semi solid material that they take egg like porridge it has got all the digestives it has got the carbohydrate pulses and all that because that is actually even if you take little quantity that's going to create such an uh, rasayana therapy to your body because you are making yourself completely clean and then you are giving something which is actually very strengthening in nature and you are taking it only in very little quantities also so uh, immediately after this panchakarma also we advise the people to slowly increase the diet pattern and uh, uh, there is a pattern in our uh, ayurveda itself we call it samsarjana krama wherein we first give only the rice water and then slowly take them to the protein diet wherein finally we end up with even mamsa rasa mamsa rasa means meat soup so it is like slowly taking them through carbohydrates and then ending up with protein diet okay thanks so much okay so oh, you have mentioned about That's you know so this vamana for the patients uh, dr aramya ji uh, is this vamana only for the patients or uh, anyone can go yeah, to anyone. specifically mentioned that in this in case of uh, cold climate yeah. you know like uh, I, you we cannot mm. say specifically this time period it's actually in ayurveda the vasanta kala we call it vasanta kala which is almost equal to spring in that period uh, you actually have an increase of this kapha you all of us will experience also that kind of uh, uh, excess salivation you want to spit out the phlegm yes. and all that so in that avastha it is generally advised that people undergo this therapy itself so as to eliminate it all right and what is the minimum age to undergo this panchakarma for example i don't think so kids of 10 years of need it but then what is the minimum age if one wants to yes as in guys maybe you know uh, young generally it is 16 years okay. except for vasti is vasti that something we give some vasti can be given even after one year but generally not given much most okay. of these treatments the purgation alone can be given because purgation it can, we can actually try the dose no the dose can be varied we can make it mild we can make it medium we can make it very ferocious also but uh, when you are giving to children we can just adjust the dose as to make it very mild so that is why purgation is not a problem except for purgation and vasti uh, the other okay. uh, treatments are done only after you 16 years all right so uh, arumya ji i have one more uh, you know uh, as a commoner i'm asking so uh, you know we are talking about this punch and uh, you know the purification and purification all the uh, you know clear cl cleansing of the body system uh, how can we really get rid of the diseases like for example these are specific uh, things that you have uh, most commonly people today find themselves either suffering with a hypertension or uh, you know uh, the diabetic patients or you can say arthritis or uh, you know there, there are very many such common diseases you find after 35 and 40 uh, cholesterol especially so what do you recommend for them that they should uh, how frequently that they should undergo this or uh, is there any specific things that they need to in mind if they are going to the first thing i would advise is meet a physician consult with him and then undergo the therapies which he advises you because uh, this panchakarma as i told you it is very serious a thing uh, for cholesterol itself we have seen there is a difference with the blood pattern level itself uh, the cholesterol level actually decreases after 7 mm -hmm. days of uh, ghee intake can you imagine that generally doesn't happen with the normal food itself mm -hmm. so the pattern of the body yes. itself has to be changed and so in case of people with hypertension diabetes uncontrolled and all we cannot give directly this panchakarma so they have to be brought to a level wherein the treatments can be done and then only these treatments can be done on them mm -hmm. because uh, the preparation of the body is very important the body has to uh, it has to be tolerable to all these procedures so when we do a procedure the person has to have the standing mm -hmm. capacity 
the body has to withstand also so that uh, withstanding capacity once it is developed by the body then these treatments can be done based on the condition so until then it is required that okay so the they may uh, uh, so this because uh, yeah. so uh, there are certain patients uh, with whom i have recently interacted and okay. uh, without considering uh, taking an advice from a doctor and without even considering telling at the center where this ayurveda panchakarma is given they have undergone and uh, there are couple of them who collapsed so, yes so that is why it goes said. in a wrong direction so i really wanted to put this in your You know, yeah. actually, so the, you know, please do consult your doctor. This your panchakarma is a very common word that you hear when you consider an Ayurvedic center, and people think it is just very easy to undergo panchakarma. Panchakarma is a very serious thing, and if you undergo one of the panchakarmas itself, it is a real good thing that you are doing. So much of justice to your body, I would say. Those days will be really valuable in your life because. it changes the whole page you are in so you you but surely you have to do only under the uh, supervision of a physician because all of these require so much of uh, variation it's called customization for each patient the medicine will vary the time you have to intake the medicine will vary and the quantity will vary so all these can be decided only by a physician so after you consult a physician you can do anything can punch karma okay arunya i want to uh, sorry can uh, punch karma yes uh, please sir your allergies as well pardon uh can punch karma cure allergies as well yes of course you don't have to undergo punch karma as such for uh, curing allergies apart from that we have treatments some medicines which help cure allergies thank you dr ramya yeah. i must say this program yeah. has been wonderful